think a lot of people would find it surprising in this lofty institution, you'd find the Gutenberg Bible, and you'd also find a recording of I Can't Get No Satisfaction. <laughs> That's right. The song that made the bad boys of rock and roll into icons is one of 225 unique sound recordings on the National Recording Registry. Created by Congress in 2000 to help preserve significant moments in history, every year the library adds to the list 25 new quintessentially American sounds. This is from 1897. This is from 1897. It's Sousa's band playing Stars and Stripes Forever, the first recording of Stars and Stripes Forever. That's incredible. From Mamie Smith's 1920 recording of Crazy Blues, to the tragedy of Herbert Morrison's famous reporting on the Hindenburg. And the famous rising to the ground of the humanity. There are also great sports moments, such as the famous Joe Lewis Max Schmeling rematch from 1938, which was heard by 70 million people. Lewis measured him right to the body, a left hook to the jaw, and Schmeling is down. Max Schmeling was a wonderful man, it turned out. He was he refused to join the Nazi party. He had a Jewish manager. And he ended up befriending Joe Lewis after the war and actually helping him financially. The nominations come from the public and must be at least 10 years old. Gene Diana and a special committee then have the tough task. Uh, we probably take uh, several hundred nominations. Uh -huh. And it, 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 we whittle it down for the librarian to ponder a smaller group by genre. And uh, 25 are selected. Making the decision about what to include can be difficult. The recordings must be historically significant, signal a major change, and meet the library's strict standards. A date which will live in infamy. Could you give me an example of something that may belong in the Library of Congress but may be too hot to be here? The example that comes to mind to me is, is a Richard Pryor comedy record. First people on the earth were black people. I think out of context, the language and, and the, uh, the often... Uh, edgy uh, racial overtones of the of the recording. It could be it could be uh, put against the library, and it could it could hurt feelings. I have a dream that one day. Martin Luther King Jr.'s 1963 speech was one of the first recordings to make the list. One of the most recent, Carl Perkins' Blue Suede Shoes from 1955. Step on my blue suede shoes. Beating out Elvis's more famous remake because Perkins' version came first. Deanna hopes the registry brings attention to the library's general catalog of three million other recordings and increases awareness for sound preservation. We're talking about the entire 20th century virtually, and we have really our, our, our oral record, our oral scrapbook of, of our country that we need to preserve.